Hey everyone, Charles here. Welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, I want to take a look at a couple of other topics from the DevNet Associate exam. I want to look at creating branches of repositories for software code development. And once we have those branches in place, I want to look at a very powerful command used in Git called the diff command. That's going to show us the differences in our files or in our repositories. So if we have different versions of code in different repositories, we can see all the differences between those before we merge those together into a main branch. Let's jump in and take a look. First, let's talk about branches. Branches are an important feature that we can use with software development and Git. So let's say we want to work on adding a new feature to our software. Branches allow us a safe way to do that by separating our development area, maybe a temporary area, from our main branch repository where we may have known working code. If we want to see a list of our current local branches, we can say git branch dash dash list. And in my case, you can see that I have a couple of branches already in place. I have a branch called main, and I have a branch called new features. The new features branch is the current branch that I'm working inside of. And you can tell that because it's coded in green and we have an asterisk beside that. If we want to switch branches, we can say git checkout followed by the name of the branch that we want to change into. In my case, I'll say main. You can see we're told we switch to the main branch. If we again run our branch dash dash list command, now you can see we are, of course, in the main branch. If we want to actually create a new branch, we can do that by saying git branch, followed by the name of the branch that we want to create. In my case, I'll just make that test. If I arrow up and run my list command again, you can see my test branch. And just as easily as we created it, we can delete that as well by saying git branch dash D for delete, followed by the name, which is test. I can hit enter, you can see it was deleted, and our list command indicates that it is in fact gone. Now with that in mind, let's say we do have an additional branch and we have copies of our known working code in there and we edit that code. How can we tell the differences in the code? Well, one of the most powerful tools in Git is the diff command. It allows us to compare files, to compare the contents of those so that we can more easily identify things that we want to keep and things that we want to discard between two similar versions of code. So let's clear off the terminal here, and I want to take a look at how we can interpret the output of a diff command. To begin with, if I perform an ls command, you'll see a file inside of this particular directory called name.py, a Python file. So let's actually vim into that and take a look at the contents of that file. And you can see that this is a very simple JSON example. We have a string identified inside of here, first name Charles, last name Judd. And at the end of that, you can see that it is asked to extract the last name from the object and to assign it to a variable, and then to print a string that says my last name is, along with the extracted data. So let's escape out of here, back into our terminal. Let's run it so you can actually see what that does. If I say python name.py, you can see that this prints my last name is Judd. Now, if we take a look at the branches that I have here for my local Git, if I say Git branch dash dash list, you can see that I have a main branch and a new features branch, exactly the same as we looked at previously. And you can see that I am currently working in the main branch, which has the asterisk beside it. So let's go into the new features branch. We can do that by saying Git checkout followed by the branch that we want to go into, which is new features in this case. And if we also perform an ls command, you're gonna see the exact same file inside of this branch. We have name.py. So let's run this file that's found in my new features branch by saying python name.py, and let's check out the output. And here you can see we have a different output. It says my first name is Charles. So obviously there's something different between these files. Now this again is a very simple example. This isn't a very large file, so we could easily look through that and figure out what's going on. But if we had an error pop up, or if this file was much larger with many, many more lines of code, the diff command is an easy way for us to be able to quickly see the differences in these. Let me clear off the terminal. If we take a look at our branch list, 
get branch dash dash list. Of course, we are in the new features branch now. We switched over into that. So if we want to see the differences between the branch that we're working in and another branch, we can say get diff and we can call out a different branch than the one we're currently inside of. Mine is currently on new features, so I want to call out main. And when I hit enter, you can see the output of my diff command. So let's talk about what all of this actually means. So first at the top, you can see that this is comparing name.py. We have an A version of that, which is in one of our branches, and a B version, which is in the other branch. Below that, you can see that we have a series of minus signs for the A version and plus signs for the B version. So this is telling us that anywhere we see a minus, and that's also color coded in red in our output below, that's associated with the A version of the file. And of course, anywhere we see a plus sign, that's color coded in green as we see below, that is associated with the B version of this particular file. So you can see that these are the two sections in this particular file, which are different from one another. One of those is this particular comment that we see that comments, we wanna pull the last name object and assign it to a variable. We see the A version is for the last name and we see this variable is last name. For the B version, that comment is for the first name and that is assigned to the first underscore name variable. Additionally, we can see our print statements are different. The A version says my last name is, while the B version, the string says my first name is. And of course, we saw this when we actually ran the Python file. Now, also helpful you'll see is that we have some lines that are not color coded. We have a couple of lines that are just in white. So what are these about? Well, really all these are doing is they're giving us context of where these differences are within the actual file itself. They're giving us a place to look for. So we know that right after this particular comment, right after our JSON string, we know that that is where this particular line is found within the coding. And additionally, we have this line, which is a print comment. And we know that these lines of code are going to be found right after that. So they're just giving us a target to look for if we're manually looking through that code in order to change those. Another thing I want to point out is these two sets of numbers. What exactly do these mean? Well, again, these are indicators of where these lines are found within the code. So this negative 13 that we see, again, anywhere we see the minus sign that tells us this is for the A version of the file. So in the A file, what we're seeing here is the code output in our terminal starting 13 lines from the top. So the code snippet we see in the terminal starts at line 13 of our actual file. And likewise, for the plus version, for the B version of this file, this code snippet we see in the output also starts on line number 13. Those could of course be different depending on exactly how different your code is. And the second number, the eight, that just tells us how many lines of code we're seeing in our terminal output. So let's count these for our A version the minus version, and the way we count these is we have one line, line number two, our third line is blank, then we wanna count our minus lines. This comment takes up two lines, so we're on line one, two, three, four, five. We have a sixth line that is blank. We have a seventh line for our print comment, and our eighth line for our A version is our last name print statement, likewise, for the B version, indicated with the plus, we have the exact same thing. We have lines one, two, three. We have lines four and five for the plus version, a blank sixth line, a seventh line that is the same, which is our print comments. And finally, our eighth line is the print statement for the plus version of our file. So very helpful information. It's gonna be super helpful, again, if we have a really large file, if we have lots of lines of code and we are trying to determine the difference, we have lots of context about what those differences are here from our terminal. And in fact, let's go ahead and look inside of this file once again. We'll vim to name.py and we'll verify just some of these numbers that we see here, the 13 and the eight. So we have our file open and I'll point out that down here near the bottom right, if I highlight this, you see a 20 
comma 15. So this is going to indicate which line that we're working on. So let me actually move over to the beginning. You can see that all the way to the left, we move to space number one. We're on line 20 currently. So if we go up to line 13, where it begins the comment, load the data into the JSON object. This is our 13th line. That is the same number that we saw in our diff output. So this is where the code snippet that we saw in that terminal actually begins. And it goes down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines all the way down to line 20, just as we saw in that diff output. So again, the diff command is going to be super helpful if you're trying to determine the actual differences in some code that you have, or if you have an unexpected error. Maybe you've copied an older version of your code, you've made some changes, and you really can't figure out what's going on. This is a great way to do that. I hope you found this content useful, and I wanna thank you sincerely for watching.